Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave is here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and welcome back to more Vertical Drop Heroes HD. We are going to start things off with, as always, a rogues gallery of characters to choose from here. Ring, Guard, Willow Horn, and Thorn Crescent. So across the board, I'm looking at some uh, pretty good damage, pretty good health, especially over here on Ring Guard. Uh, we've got a Boomerang and Confusion along with Necromancer, which I have come to really enjoy. And Firewalker, which is always nice to have. Greedy and Smasher here makes Willow Horn an early leader for me personally. Shield and Dwarf Turret. I always love my Dwarf Turret. And Thorn Crescent with Magic Missile, Midas Touch, Firewalker, and Smasher. Seems nice, but I can never really pass up Greedy. So here we go. And I actually had a bit of a false start with the recording, so I had about 1,600 gold. I purchased two upgrades from my man, the Blacksmith. And uh, yeah, then, we, uh, then I realized that I wasn't uh, actually recording voice through my proper microphone. I was recording it through the inboard microphone on my laptop. And so I had to get started over again. So let's go ahead and drop and let's try to equal what was shaping up to be a pretty good run. Only about five minutes wasted on that last run, but uh, still... I always hate to uh, not do something on camera. I've been toying around with the idea for certain of uh, doing things off camera in this game to try to progress, uh, but I'm still not quite there yet. I'm not quite ready to do that just yet. But we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Oh, that was a uh, key shrine. Definitely going to take up on that. I, for some reason, I saw this flight shrine down here and just transposed the two. But now we're straight. We got our key and we are off. So I'm kind of glad I didn't pick that character Ring Guard, uh, because I actually, uh, I've been playing a lot of Shadow of Mordor since that came out. And uh, I've got a little bit of a ring on the brain right now. Uh, that game, if you if you haven't had a chance to play it, is uh, damn fine. It's a, it's a really well-made video game. Um, you know, I think a, a lot of people... Uh, call it, you know, a sort of a, a medieval Lord of the Rings inspired Arkham game. And I think that's true to a uh, to a fairly large extent. But I think that also uh, it, it also to a certain degree, I think, kind of lessens the impact of, of what this game is, because it's not just an Arkham ripoff, of, of course. I mean, you know, any game that's a ripoff would tell you that it's got more going for it than simply being a ripoff. Uh, but I really think it does. I mean, the Nemesis system alone is enough to justify uh, calling this game uh, something very interesting and innovative. Uh, but just the gameplay itself, just... You know, I said on a uh, on a free-to-play podcast recently... Sorry, I was trying to contemplate how this this looked like the end of the level right here, like the edge of the screen. And then I realized I could kind of go, whoop. And I was all of a sudden thinking, is that limbo over there? Should I fall over there? I don't know. Uh, you know, I said in a recent uh, free-to-play, the last free-to-play uh, as of this recording, uh, that, uh, you know, it asks you to do one thing and then it really uh, enables you and gives you the tools to do that one thing extremely well. And that is just slaughter orcs. Uh, and, and man, does it really do that extremely well. And I think that uh, when a game has a, a central mechanic like that and it executes it so well, uh, it's 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 worthy of, of praise. It's certainly worthy of, of praise. I mean, um, I don't know if it's worthy of awards, I, I guess, maybe. Uh, but it, it is definitely uh, noteworthy for its single-minded execution of not only the Nemesis system, but the uh, the orc slaying in general. So I wait for that coin to slowly pop in on me. Uh, but, you know, I, I feel a little bit weird using this as a platform to talk talk about another game, but uh, frankly, right now, it's just kind of what's going on. Uh, if you pass without a fight, a golden bonus is your right. So it is a, a forced pacifist run, or not a forced pacifist run, but a, uh, a pacifist run, which you will be awarded for if you make it all the way through. And, uh, you know, it's a challenge, so why not? Oh, okay. Missing a pacifist orb right there, but... Uh, at some point, you kind of have to say, uh, I got to, oh, and we lost it. I was going to say, at some point, you kind of have to say, uh, I've got to take a little bit of a, the best path in order to maintain my pacifism. But then we lost our pacifism to a oddly placed raven. 
But yeah, so it feels a little bit weird to uh, to talk about Shadow of Mordor whilst playing uh, Vertical Drop Heroes. Uh, but, you know, we're like 16 or 17 episodes into this, and I feel like I've got to do something besides just say, now I'm hopping over and I'm going to take this chest. I think it's a good time to spend a key, so I'm definitely going to go ahead and grab that. Oh, that raven. That raven is always over after me. Oh, you know, I mean, I, I got to, I gotta, if this is going to continue, I got to do something more, right? Uh, and it is going to continue at least until I can beat this damn game. Uh, and that's why I, I kind of said, you know, I'm con contemplating some off-screen stuff. Uh, but not sure if I'm there yet uh, with the off-screen, you know, whether or not I'm actually going to do off-screen. Uh, no more keys, but I will, uh, I'll take a wizard, sure. Hey, good job, wizard. Shield the guy who's stuck in a cage. Uh, you know, doesn't seem effective to me, but you're a wizard, so you probably know what's going on. We'll throw ourselves out a dwarf turret and let him do his worst. And his worst is actually pretty darn good. Along with the wizard's shield... We really take very little to no damage on that fight, and yeah, we're looking pretty good. And man, he blowed up nicely, didn't he? And there we go. On to level three, the Endless Desert. Uh, but yeah, Shadow Mortar, play it. If you haven't played it, play it. It's amazing. It really got me interested in the lore, um, surprisingly. Very few games uh, tend to do that. Oh, it's one of those bomb levels. Uh, very few games actually succeed in doing that. Uh, in actually making me get interested in the source material. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, uh, that game got me interested in the uh, Warhammer 40k lore uh, to, to the point where I, I, you know, I did a little bit of uh, ooh, research on that and, uh, you know, bought a couple of books that I never read. But, you know, still, it got me interested in the lore. And um, I've sort of started and stopped the Lord of the Rings books over the years. Uh, and never, but never really never really read them all the way through. I mean, I've watched the movies, uh, including the uh, the cartoons from the 70s or 80s, the uh, amazing animated uh, Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Oh, hey, look at you. You look like you want to die. We'll put our shield on, just drop down, and do battle with him. Wow, he almost killed me, even with a shield on. It's kind of scary, actually. So let's concentrate. We need health. Oh, no, we got a level up, so we're fine. All right, Shrine of Sparks, don't need it. Uh, but yeah, I've never really dug too deep into the lore beyond that. And I know that there's the, uh, you know, there's the uh, additional books, like the additional fleshing out of the of the universe, which is the Cimmerillion or something like that. And I think some of this is inspired by that, uh, obviously. But yeah, it really hooked me in. It really hooked me in and uh, got me interested. You know, it got me interested in the lore uh, of, of Lord of the Rings. And... I, I, I'm not going to say I'm going to go read all the books or, or go, you know, uh, dig too deeply into the source material, uh, but it hooked me for the period that I was playing the game, um, and, and I still am. I'm almost at the end of it at this point. Um, by the time this goes up, I might actually be done. Uh, man, I was so I was so hooked into it because it felt like a story that just had legs, uh, that that lived beyond what I was experiencing. I felt like I was getting just a a bite-sized chunk of the world that this story took place in. And really, that felt the same when I played uh, Warhammer 40,000, uh, the Space Marine game. You know, that actually felt uh, very, very similar. I felt like I was experiencing just a tiny part of what this world had to offer, that this was a story being told in one small corner of a vast universe. And and that really is there with uh, Shadow of Mordor as well. And I think that's one of the things that will often get me uh, hooked on a game, when I feel like it's a game that is, uh, there's more there. And it, it'll actually do the same thing with movies too. A movie that seems to have more going on beyond the surface uh, will very often hook me in as well. And uh, yeah, it was really, really interesting, a, a journey that I was uh, happy to take. And I'm actually considering for uh, what would be the, officially the first time ever uh, purchasing and playing season content, uh, season pass content. You say that in the right, so those words in the right order, so they make sense to the human ear. Uh, season pass content. Uh, I did purchase the Borderlands 2 season pass, but I never actually played the content. I got it, you know, for five bucks as part of a, you know, crazy deal somewhere and thought, oh, I have Borderlands. Uh, no, wait, I take that back. You know, I did play all the Darksiders 2 DLC. So uh, not my first time, but my first time in a while. I don't often do that. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's inspiring me 
uh, to a certain degree to uh, to try it out, to, to push into that season content, uh, season pass content. Uh, let me just make that a, an official term, season content. Uh, let me push push into that season pass content and, uh, you know, see what's there. Uh, see what more is there because um, there's there doesn't seem to be a whole ton of uh, a lot to do once you're through the game. Uh, mess around with the Nemesis system, that kind of cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I would really enjoy seeing a bit more to the story because yeah, I, I, I really love the idea of this just being a small story taking place in a small corner of a very large and, and, and storied uh, universe. And it's really, really hooked me. So highest possible recommendation on that one for you guys. For everybody, not just you guys, you know, even the people who aren't watching this. Oh, this is going to be interesting. We've got ourselves a, uh, a bunch of grubbies and they are just exploding everywhere and well more appropriately that is our dwarf turret that is exploding everywhere and okay that just sort of went crazy for a minute and i just sort of let it happen and now we're going to get focused here we're going to get back on track we're going to kill ourselves a crow if he dares come near us and he did and uh, you know what we'll kill ourselves another crow maybe this guy wants us to kill crows wouldn't that be convenient I took out an alarm goblin a while ago. If you can defeat three more, okay. Increase your maximum damage by two. Uh, considering we've already killed one alarm golem, I mean, it shouldn't be a big deal uh, to kill two more. If it is easy to do, we will do it. If it isn't, then uh, screw it. We won't do it. Hey, you're supposed to die. Is he just? Does he just run away? There we go. There we go. All right. All of you now must die. Drain that water. And what do we have here? 100 XP. Sure, why not? Drain that water. Getting all the gold, all the bonuses. It's lovely. Do we have another alarm golem? Oh, we do have two thieves down here. Oh my goodness. This is going to be fun. Alright, don't die on spikes, and just poop out gold for me for the next couple of minutes, and uh, we will be happy. Okay, so I never saw the other alarm golem, so that means I either killed him and didn't realize it, or I just missed him outright. So our turret is going to do work as it does, as it often does. There you go. Finish it up, Turret. Go ahead. Take it out. Take it out. Finish it up. Not doing a ton of damage. And I don't see a Restoration Shrine. Our turret must have blown it up. And here we go. Strange statue. Every time a minion dies, you will see a swarm of flies. Oh, great. Because that's one of my favorite things in the world. Flies. All right. Okay. Unavoidable spikes. Avoidable flies. Now, even though they're avoidable, I chose not to avoid them, apparently. Alright. Here we go. Into the water. Where am I going? I don't really know. I guess I'll free this guy. This will make the way down a lot faster. There you go. Thank you, pal. All right, this wizard wants uh, three green potions. Probably no chance of that happening. Uh, there's an alarm. All right, our barbarian is just going to town. Hey, Mimic. That's right, that's what should happen to all Mimics. They should die horribly on spikes. Oh, another Mimic. It is Mimic Town. I see another one down here. Do I even want to go down here? I see one chest, one mimic, a barbarian, and a crate. I guess that was worth it, sure. What are you offering? Ice bolts in all directions? No, thank you. Mimic chests everywhere. Okay, okay. We still got some help from our hero friends here. And, you know, some hindrance when they decide it's time to uh, trigger alarms. Thank you, thank you, paladin. Oh, Mimic, hello. Uh, all right, we'll drop our dwarf turret there. We'll shield ourselves. We'll go in. 
you know, trigger another alarm, because, you know, why not? And we've got another turret here. Oh, getting a little hairy over here. Let that turret do a little work. Oh, it's going to be a lot of flies. Okay, good. A level up is exactly what we needed. Or some life or whatever happened. <laughs> Don't ask me. I, I rarely know what's going on. I got some life. That's what's important. Uh, we will drop a turret here just to help us clear out. There we go. He is doing his best and his worst. All right, avoided those flies. And good. Thank you for being a sponge for me, Mr. Dwarf. And we are on to six, the Crystal Caverns. Finesse. 10% chance to deal double damage critical. Uh, yeah, that seems good, but I just, I don't want to muddy up my traits too much. I really don't. I want to keep constantly getting greedy. So I'm being greedy and I don't want to uh, go quite that far. What are you offering, sir? Drops a trap that explodes after three seconds or when triggered, dealing 200% damage to all... Uh, that's awesome. I'm going to take it. Uh, you know, with I'm not as picky with my abilities, my activated abilities, as I am with my traits. Uh, because I think... It will, I, I still don't know how these guys work. I had this theory that they do to you as much damage as you have kills, but that's not accurate. Oh, are we going to find out? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I, I still have no idea uh, how they work. There we go. I'll gladly take that damage just to get away from those guys because I don't understand them and I fear them for that reason. And you are offering Force Blast. Multiple shockwaves, brakes, block, blah, blah, blah. Ah, you know, it sounds good, but it also sounds very disruptive. Ah, uh, the extra range on the spear coming in very handy there. Very handy. Uh, yeah, we'll free a wizard because I do enjoy the shielding that the wizard gives me. And avoid all those mimics. There's way too many mimics on this level. All right, so what will we have down at the bottom of this pit? I can only imagine. All right, so, uh, oh, it's our spider friend. Oh, that was great. I just managed to get my restoration shrine. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna brute force her with uh, with dwarves. So uh, yeah, you have been overrun by our uh, battalion of dwarf gunners. So uh, that's one way to deal with the uh, spider queen, I guess. The Cathedral of Dust. Here we go. Two enemies to gain a key, sure. One that we uh, one-shotted right away, and the other one we one-shotted as well. So 11 keys we have here. That is access to a bunch of crates. That is access to a couple of crates and a ranger. Uh, why not? But before we do that, let's make sure that we get that crate. Nothing in it but health. Oh, well. All right, the Zombles. Eh, information. Okay, it is... Uh, someone is going to want that, I imagine, right? Oh, come on. I hit you fair and square. Uh, Shrine of Frost. You know what? 22 gold. Why not? Shrine of Frost has definitely uh, hurt us in the past. <laughs> but uh, that time it went off without a hitch for the most part. Oh, hey. I love you arrow shooters. You are my favorite thing in the world. Keys, keys, keys. Lots of snipers. What do we got here? Activate this shrine. It's the ice bolt one again. All right. Well, um, oh, he's selling something. Sandworms. Summons two sandworms appear on both sides of the screen in an arc, devouring everything in their path. That's that sounds really good. That sounds really good. Sure. Let's do it. She just kind of freaks out there. I still don't understand completely how zombies work. She just kind of freaked out there for a minute, and then she came back to life. Okay. So, a key, but there's a shrine down there that will give me a key, so I feel kind of okay about that. And that shield bearer died pretty easily. 
take that and really suffer no consequences from that key shrine whatsoever. We get ourselves a nice ranger. And there's another ancient tablet. I feel like I've missed an ancient tablet. So I think we're probably out of luck on that. Definitely don't have it yet. You're not a mimic. You are not a mimic. What you selling, pal? Dodger. 15% chance to dodge. That's That sounds really great, but I'm almost out of money, so I don't want to spend money right now in case something really good comes up. Oh, and it's her again. All right, well, you have bested us in the past, my lady, uh, but now I'm going to do my best to destroy you, Grey Witch. Come down here where I can kill you. Yeah, all right, the Grey Witch is dead. And we are moving on. I'm not even going to hang around. We're just moving on. It's level eight. Oh my god, the volcano fields, the volcanic fields. I uh, believe this is officially the first time I've been on level eight. So, uh, hooray for me. Water is nice, especially in a uh, volcano-based level. All right, I don't know what this guy's going to do. He's going to leave fire when I kill him. And that fire is going to not dissipate. Great. Is that because this is a fire-based curse or is this just what those guys do are they they almost look like they're riding okay they're shooting fire and that fire wow i wish i had a firewalker guy right now really wish i had a firewalker guy oh what are you selling triple shot okay i can't stand here and take this all day uh fires three arrows allowing you hit multiple enemies at range uh god sure you know, sure. All right, we're definitely going to take that. Can't take those keys with us. I did notice your keys go to zero when you die, so I think in the last episode I thought I used all my keys during the run, but actually I didn't. Not a big deal, just a little bit of personal housekeeping there. All right, lots of stuff going on here. Spiders, I don't like them. Quill beasts, I don't like them. Crates, I like them when they give me good stuff, like that one did. Ow, that was a pretty hard hit. Not a fan of that. Okay, I've uh, never seen a boss on this level, of course, because I've never been to this level. So I can only imagine what sort of madness is, uh, is going to await me at the bottom here. But I'm ready with my shield, I'm ready with my dwarves. I am absolutely uh, ready for probably nothing. I probably know not the pain which awaits me below. All right, here we go. Oh my god, okay. It's like a beholder. Okay, water? I like water. Oh my god, he's doing so much damage. All right, a health potion. So many enemies, so many enemies, and I'm stuck. Stuck there with a little glitch, but that's okay, that's okay. Okay, how can there be fire and water? How can there be fire and water? Ah. Okay, don't be where he is. All right, shield. Shield absorbs 50% of my damage. Yeesh, okay. This is one of the first enemies that I've actually felt like I could fight. You know, like strategically fight. Just don't expect me to talk during this. Don't expect don't expect uh, insight or commentary. Expect me to try to approach this like a 2D game boss fight. All right, shield myself while I wait for him to come back down. And oh my God, we beat him! First time on level eight, and we made it through. We are on level nine. Oh man. And it's snowing! Oh, frozen peaks. Frozen peaks. Okay, so we got a, we got a rainstorm. Rainstorms make the water higher. Hates the flame, hates the fire. Could have really used that in the last level, but oh well. Ice is slippery, okay. Oh, he's so cute. Look at a little puffin down there. Oh, hey buddy, I want to murder you. Come here so I can murder you. All right, probably shouldn't be so... Uh, so, um, 
cavalier about uh, murdering these puffins because probably what's going to happen is they're going to kill me. Okay, that one's shielded. How did he get a shield? Is he like a guy? Like a, like a, oh no, okay, something is shielding them. Okay. Don't know what. Oh, that guy. Oh, so, ooh, it's the, the enemy's version of a wizard. I see. What do you got for me, fireball? Fires a flaming missile. Leaves a trail of fire. You know what? At this point, it's all out on the table, baby. Let's just spend that money. Spend that money. 11 keys. All right, you are shielding. Oh, is that guy over there doing the shielding? Wonder what, what's your name, bud? Holy Shore moment there. What's your name, buddy? All right, four enemies for gems, sure. Especially when those enemies don't end up actually affecting me at all. I uh, didn't need to waste that key, but, you know, now I feel a little bit better about my total key usage, you know. Doesn't always have to be quality uh, usage of keys. There we go. We'll key... Yep, use this for sure to get down here. Get that key back relatively painlessly. And we will uh, free ourselves a ranger. And I'm just super excited right now. I don't, I'm probably not offering much insight here into what's going on on the screen, because I am just genuinely excited uh, to have finally gotten this far. Okay, thank you. Finally. All that water took so long to drain. Oh, those penguins freeze you. Those puffins. Wow. Okay, so this is pretty intense. Getting, getting intense. That was the most awkward pronunciation of getting that I think I've ever allowed to slip free from my mouth. Getting intense. Uh, yeah, it's way past intense. All right, let's get down here. Lots of treasure, hopefully. Oh, thank you. That was, thank you, water. Okay, the, okay, now I see the, now I see the power of the puffin. Because that was bull crap. All right, so I don't know if I even want to go down there. I mean, I'm on life support at this point. Uh, dwarf turret. Sure, sure, that's that's working out to a certain extent. Got me a level up. Got me a jewel. Got me a chest. All right, that Magus needs to perish. All right, get myself an ally here for sure. I need an ally. All right, you guys, help me out. Help me out, come on. I'm not going to be spawning anything right this second. Get that... Get that. Lots of keys, nothing to spend them on right now. Still mad at those puffins for that freaking water trap. They kept making stuff into ice and then busting it so that it constantly poured water so that I was constantly stuck, sort of bouncing in one spot in the middle of the air. Oh, it's a Yeti! It's the Yeti. All right, uh... Okay, okay, let's try to stay away from getting frozen if possible as as I jump right into something that freezes me. Uh, shield, oh my god, right as I was pressing my shield, I got popped up and then it hit. Wow, that was actually, I was, I'm really happy with that run. Um, long run, but I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy with it. Um, oh wait, I wasn't dead? Oh my god, I wasn't dead. I don't know what made me think I was dead. I guess the dwarf turret died and I thought I was dead. Oh my... I feel like an idiot. I feel like the stupidest person to ever live. Oh my lord. And I will absolutely post this video because that's hilarious to me. I will look back at this next week and think, oh my god, how stupid am I and how funny is that? So yeah, there you go. We made it to level nine. Willow Horn will go down in legend, not only uh, for being one of our most powerful characters and uh, our character that got us the furthest into the game ever, but for also being an absolute moron and just standing there and letting that Yeti uh, absolutely destroy him, even though he still had some life left in him. So man, 
super happy. Really looking forward to the next episode. Hope you guys will uh, join me then. All right, I have been Big Dave. This has been Vertical Drop Heroes HD. And until next time, take it easy.